five seconds remaining. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, this is... Ten seconds. Yeah, thanks. Five seconds remaining. I blame Liquid. OG's turn to ban. seconds remaining five seconds remaining uh -huh. radiant team pick Triant protector. OG's turn to I felt that Thunderbirds were a bit too cocky I th think they maybe got too overconfident that they got it in a bag and it's never done until your throne falls especially when you're playing against alchemist uh tree and protector really made that game i mean uh, plus alchemist of course but uh, some crucial tree and protector overgrowths and that fast agonims yeah uh, it was a sleeping dragon a sleeping tree dragon if you will at the start well outside of his first blood of course but you know, it took a while for him to really start feeling like he was a strong presence into the game, and then suddenly he was a, a big problem for Thunderbirds, and being able to kind of continue to advance the game forward, whether it be taking down the structures that living armor just made so durable, or whether he was able to bring in the extra bit of intel through him running around in the trees, or having that Ags later on. So you could see why it's such a valued pickup, and continues to get hit with the ban hammer in these drafts but not this game again that means that thunderbirds are going to be able to snipe it for themselves as their first pick and og oh, no. they go right into a bat rider and they say let's get the alchemist guys they don't care man if uh, well, they can uh, i mean thunderbirds can't ban uh those three heroes in the first phase, but in the previous game they could have banned it in the second phase. Uh, well, if it if it works for you, you're just gonna pick it. Like you don't give a shit. Yeah. It's not yeah. it's not the most entertaining Dota, but hello, they're playing hey, to OG, win. OG play it good. They play it damn well, so you can't really fault them on that. If you're not gonna ban it, what's to stop them from picking it up here? What's to stop Fly the man? Are you gonna stop him? Are you gonna run up to him and say, "Hey, Fly, stop picking like that"? No, he'll kill you. Again, we talked about this before. Krav Maga. The man is huge. Okay? Kick your ass. Don't don't tell him you don't like Alchemist, okay? I don't. I see him down for breakfast at one of the events, and I tell him, oh, I love Alchemist. Good pick. I love you. Here, I love your picks. Like, but here, just, just fly. I'm gonna, next time I see you, I'm going to give you a dirty look, and you're not going to know it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, it's, despite my hate for Alchemist... We Whoa. get that Meepo, so this Opa. is awesome. That is a... But why? Why now, though? Like, was there any flag coming that would have said to OG, oh, we gotta ban Meepo? Like, why do you have to commit to the Meepo here and now? That is crazy and awesome at the same time, right? It is. I mean, Meepo just uh, destroys Alchemist in a lane. If it's a mid matchup, they might still go for what they've done in the previous game, put Alchemist uh, on the safe lane, just secure him that extra farm. I mean, he farms, uh, if he has a free lane, he farms faster than on the mid lane, just goes to the forest later on, gives someone XP on the lane, either mid or on safe lane. But uh, Meepo, Meepo with Triant Protector, this, this is pretty interesting, I, I don't think I've saw it before, because Triant was not in the pool. Uh, if you focus Meepo, those uh, extra instances and heal oh. will yeah. really, it's gonna be really hard to kill a Meepo. I wonder if this is a secret strat that Thunderbirds have been practicing since <laughs> Triant Protector was brought into Captain's mode. Could be. I hope I so. I mean, why else the early commitment to Meepo? Have they played it yet, this event? I feel bad. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm fairly certain this is the Meepo debut. Um, I could be wrong. Again, don't hate me. There's way too much Dota happening at once right now, but that's what you get with the Swiss format. Um, but 
here it is now, and they got to get it for something special. I, I don't know. It's just uh, it's exciting, and uh, and uh, I'm nervous at the same time. Yeah, this is my first know. Meepo game as well. Uh, can't see everything, uh, but uh, okay, let's check the bands. Uh, instant ban for Winter Wyvern. That's like uh, penicillin for Meepo. Just yes, insta kills him with uh, his ultimate. You can't really do anything about it. Maybe just try to cast uh, E Blade at some point, or have like a grave. Some you need some kind of save hero disruption, astral, whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. And I didn't think about the fact that it would be nice to pick up the Meepo, bef you know, pre-banning stage, so you can at least get out two good uh, bands that would normally counter Meepo. Whereas if OG just casually picked up a Wyvern as a support pickup in their lineup, it could have deterred the Meepo pick altogether. I could be overthinking this, but whatever the case may be, OG have already banned out the Slark here, and uh, now we go back the way of Thunderbirds if they're to ban out more potential problems for the Meepo or something else we'll have to see. Yeah, Slark banned. Uh, Slark, kind of a hero that uh, does so well with Tree and Protector. He can uh, overextend at one point and just be safe. Uh, and it's resolution hero. That's pretty, true. Pretty classic. Yeah, the... Uh... Oh god, why is it slipping my mind? The Slark Ultimate. Uh... With together with the living armor, it's pretty damn ridiculous too. Yeah, so I can see the potency there. Imagine Slark with Aghanim Scepter. He hides those who are close to him and have the ultimate effect of Slark. Yeah. And imagine doing that with Meepo. I don't know if it huh. works with all Meepos. Probably yes. So imagine all like hear... like a black black cloud attacking you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all I ever hear though is that that Ags just sucks. Like you have to be so close to Meepo or not Meepo, so close to the Slark to even you know really get it working here. But oh, look at these fun and funky fresh pickups that we got here, closing out our second phase of picks. OG go right into the Elder Titan, looking to hit Thunderbirds where it hurts in the armor department, while Thunderbirds segue into a Life Stealer pickup, which. I believe uh, after watching the great Nahaz in his video, I took the time to uh, study the old man, and I believe Life Stealer has a pretty terrible win record. It's Kiev Major. Uh, Life Stealer? Yeah. Um, do you know the percentage? Mm, yeah, terrible? around. It, terrible. terrible it's, percent? It's well, below I don't know now. Whatever it is probably. now, it's probably different. I don't know if uh, Life Stealer has been picked up since then. It's a, it's a good chance there's been like tons of other games since then. Yeah, I so. saw VP winning with it, I saw IG winning with Lifestealer. Uh, let's talk about uh, Elder Titan, Hello Jerex. Um, well, uh, Astral Spirit works uh, against all Meepos, but uh, usually you don't max it. I mean, it looks good on the paper, but uh, it, in the later stages of the game, like you just cast it and get an insane amount of damage. But Elder Titan is not that kind of a hero that's going to be close, like dealing damage, Shadow Blade, stuff like that. But it gives him extra move speed and uh, yeah, it's good against him. Yeah, they, they still need the vehicle for Life Stealer. They have a couple pickups to be able to do so, though. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now, what do you think about this Lena pickup here? Because it's not what... It's not... I don't know. It's not a fly. Is it a fly Lena? Cause no, it's going to be mid Lena. So uh, that means it's safe lane the safe again. Lane? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Need... He was just in the safe lane the last game. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, they picked Lena. They need some uh, extra burst for, for that Meepo. They don't have anything, and it works... Miracles with uh, Echo Stomp, Light Strike, you can position yourself really good. There it is. This Here, fishy, uh, fishy. The, the vehicle himself suddenly shows up, and we're back into more of what we witnessed at DAC in the comfort meta there, the Life Stealer Slardar duo. And uh, I wanted to say for Lena in the case, what did you think about the matchup? of her and Meepo in the mid lane. Mm, pretty even matchup in my book. Uh, if Lina gets too cocky, she she can actually die to Meepo, especially with Treant Protector on the side. 
Trade protect protector usually don't get uh, those early instances in living armor uh, levels. Yeah. yeah, he just tries to go for nature's guys, boots, orb of venom, so he gets that extra move speed. And if he gets a hand on Lena, it's gonna be some easy kills. Thunderbirds are almost going into a five melee lineup, though. So I guess I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. We've seen it happen a couple of times. We saw even at TI six MVP were just known for running five man melee lineups. Yeah, and, five uh, five man li melee lineup against Elder Titan is pretty shit. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's tough. You don't want to be get caught in easy stomp setups and then you're forced to take fights within that natty aura. It's kind of ridiculous, but Sven will get the ban hammer coming after OG removing the Omni Knight, which would have completed our five-man melee trifecta. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what Thunderbird's off for instead here. The support grab, it, I would imagine. Misery probably opting to take the Treon Protector. This is seeming like the Soxa pick. And, uh, I mean, you could just stick with the tried-and-true Rubik, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. What would you like to see here? Uh, maybe a Skyrat Mage, just some extra burst with the bomb, and uh, some more control. It good. It's good with overgrowth. I mean, it's you can pick pretty much like five heroes. I'll just check. Okay. Venge. Get finally, one one little piece of range here in the Vengeful Spirit, another oh. uh, Soxa classic. Okay, I didn't think about it. I mean, they needed a kind of a save hero against uh, Bat Rider, so that breaks the lasso. And I like their lineup. It's really nice. It's a lot of lots minus of armor. Yeah. yeah, lots of minus armor, lots of physical burst to be able to work with. A great accelerated farmer, a Meepo, one that can actually contest, if not out-farm, the mighty alchemist here. And great defensive saves in the Treon Protector's living armor and the swap capabilities from the Vengeful Spirit. I gotta say, I like this Thunderbird's lineup a lot. Oh, this is good pickup. Right. Timbersaw against Treon Protector. I would imagine that the Timbersaw is a better hero. <laughs> oh, pure Judge damage added. for that. I mean, Meepo in general has a higher uh, base magic reduction. Other heroes have 25. Uh, Meepo has 35. So. Yeah, he can shred him up. Does require a lot of momentum. Mm. Yeah, but mm, look at this game. Uh, if it goes like past minute 50, 60, with all those Aghanim upgrades from Alchemist, yeah, this looks so much better than in the game too. Are you uh, also leading the way of Thunderbirds on this one? Uh, with lineup B, I'll go with the Thunderbirds. Uh, if they manage to do well in the early stages uh, and just play it safe, they have good Roche potential, good tower hits, good base defense. Uh, not not so good base defense, but they have three and protector. Uh, I think they can just snowball in this game if the early game goes into their favor. Yeah, that that would seem like a possible outcome here, but. OG have uh, what has been working for them for quite a while now and has secured them a couple of tournament wins in other majors. S4 Classic Batrider and uh, the always favored Radiance Illusion tactics of the Mighty Alchemist. So OG, you know, while it feels like on paper they might not have a better matchup, we'll have to see if maybe they're just going to be able to make it work as they did in the previous game. So let's get into it now. Game number three. And this is to kind of seed out these teams into their playoff positions here. We only have one more heat after this. And if I'm not mistaken, we will be casting Liquid, uh, Liquid versus something. Faceless. Yes. Faceless, yeah. Liquid versus Faceless. Should be a good time to close out the remaining bits of the Swiss group stage. What do you think about the Swiss group stage so far? Uh, we talked a little bit uh, about it yesterday. I love it. I didn't know much about Swiss uh, format until like two months ago. Uh, but so far I like it. I, the only bad thing about it from the like uh, viewing point for the for the viewers, uh, you can't watch much games because it's stacked up. There's a lot of games going on. Yeah. But as a turn, there's, there's no perfect uh, format, but uh, this seems to be the best one that I've seen. 
Yeah, it just depends. Everyone's going to want something different out of their tournament event. Some people like to see every team play against every other team. Uh, you can't get that with this kind of a format. Some people want to be able to watch every game comfortably. You can't get that with this format. But if you're looking for some of the most fair seeding you could ask for, and if you're going into a single elimination playoff on a tournament this big, I think you kind of want to lean towards the side of having a very fair seeding process. So I definitely feel like this is something that fits the major system pretty well. I'm curious to see what's, what they kind of do with the, with TI. But, uh, yeah, it's turned out pretty good so far. Just lots of games and uh, a very crazy hour for me personally is all. But yeah, but Misery already being a bit of a headache in this early game. They had to commit a century just to see if they can kind of catch them or maybe some possible first blood. And it is giving them some extra pot shots here, but... This is just what Tree is, you know, trying to do. Yeah, no, we didn't talk about the lanes because of that last uh, timber saw pick. The everything changed, so it's a support. Lena Anna is playing uh, Alchemist on mid against uh, Meepo, which is going to be in favor for Meepo, of course. Uh, on the bottom lane, we have Venge and Nyx against Batrider. Batrider is going to have pretty decent time with Wind Lace once he gets boots up. It's going to be pretty easy if they try to go on him. He bought a TP, and uh, he can just TP out to a shrine. No tail on the timber saw. I have not seen that in a while. Do you remember the last time you've seen a no tail mm. timber saw? Nope. Okay. Well, obviously very good against the likes of some of these Thunderbird members, including the, the Misery Tree. And not afraid to bully back the Slardar. Obviously, the timber saw, not really afraid to bully back any sort of melee in the lane matchup. But uh, I'm curious to see how much of Jerex is going to be kind of floating around this matchup or not. You know, or if Fly's going to be one to be taking most of the pull greed here. The support situation is going to be very intriguing to me on OG side. Oh, Rasmus. Uh-oh. He's level 2. Okay. They connect with the crush here. Fly tries to walk on out. Jerex gets a beautiful stomp, and it allows him to take down that fresh level 2 misery tree. And it is OG. Shoving T-Birds off their back, and now a potential fight for the 2-minute rune. It is going to be Jerex who does pick it up. Moon is going to have to take all those shots and kind of waddle himself back into the lane. Yeah. Misery was just standing right on the fog and just saw Lina, but uh, didn't see where uh, Titan was standing. So at the moment he tried to make a go, uh, Jerex showed up. So pretty bad timing for him. Yeah, they have put themselves in this kind of position where they are trying to get a lot out of this somewhat of an aggro lane here with Misery floating around, but they don't seem to be adding any sort of extra pressure to OG. No Tail is still kind of coasting his way forward. Double man and shrine. All right, Anna just passes by, like says, okay, they're waiting for Hold on a second. Let me Hold get on. the spray out. Yeah. Oh, now let's nice. hit the showers. Oh, do you sing during the shower? Hmm? Do you sing when you shower? Oh, yeah. I mean, you do? Oh, yeah. Do you think uh, sing, sing, sings during the shower? Hey, I uh, probably not. No, he he looks like he does. No, he probably masturbates in the shower. Isn't that something he likes? Anyways, back to the uh, Kia Major here. We have Soxa rotating through this bottom lane, and uh, we have S4 potentially getting flanked. He's going to be forced to go into his fire flight, but gets welcomed by the magic missile. But that's all the fault they're going to have here. And suddenly, Soxa is about to hit four stacks. Is S4 going to pursue this? He pops the salve, and he is going for it. That's five stacks, and that is a dead Soxa. But wow. S4 now could be in a bit of trouble. Resolution moves in with the open wounds, but Jerex is here and will be the bodyguard. What a play by S4. I mean, he's known for his Batrider play. They dive too deep, and that's when it backfires to you. Very nice stuff there for Jerex to always show up at a time in need already in this game. Uh, we're seeing Weepo begin to evolve little by little here, still holding, of course, the highest and last hits and net worth that like you do with your Meepo. Oh. They want to go to a shrine, at least it seems so, or he just wants to switch to jungle right now and give some space to Misery because they had to abandon top lane. There's really nothing they can do about it, Slardar and Treant anymore because of that bad start. And now where do they go is the thing. I guess it looks like they're going to be leaving Moon Meander just to the lane here. He doesn't have, oh, he does have at least a Quelling Blade, but uh, not a full Iron Talent if you wanted to jungle there. 
Misery will actually take residents in the mid lane to farm, and Weeha just simply steps out at this point to move through the jungle. I don't yeah, know so if he had to kind of sacrifice the lane earlier than he'd like, but, uh, you know, I guess the support's got to farm somewhere. Yeah, well, now uh, even Alk abandoned the lane, so it's uh, Lina against Triant Protector on mid. Like, they can't kill each other, so just gonna get some XP. Yeah. Cleared about, and now Ana is gonna be obviously matching up in all the farm that Weeha is gonna be trying to go for here. Obviously, difference is being No Tail bullies his lane without question. S4 is, you know, finding his way. 12 and 1 CS for him. Resolution's really not finding him as uh, too much of trouble. Sox are feeling a bit frisky here. Not looking to go deep to plant any sort of ward. Maybe looking for a setup, but whatever the case may be, is opted to find some other business. Yeah, this game's not gonna have much uh -oh. kills. I mean, whoa. Oh, whoa. Jerex, poor guy. He was finding a lot of good timing for himself before, but this time trying to move in to go for the sentry. They may still be able to get the obs. Yes, they w one more, buddy. Whoa. Get up there. Get the finish. All right, there he go. Finishes his plate. We'll be able to take it down. But they do lose Jerex for it. Yeah, S4. Infused Raindrop. Uh, Tranquil Boots will just go straight to Blink Dagger right after that. Uh, we'll have Lane on bottom and just, we'll just continue farming first. Oh, Weepo. Yeah, he's in trouble. Is able to get the poof to his nearby Meepo. But S4 does sidestep the Earthbind. He's on chase. Can he get the finish in time? No! Misery gets the connection, the brief stun. I don't know if it would have been enough regardless, but we will live. Very close encounter there. S4 playing extra aggressive. You don't really suspect the surprise mid lane approach of a Batrider, I guess, at that time. Yeah, some deep wards in the forest from uh, Elder Titan. They want to have kill potential once uh, that Lina gets level 6 and uh, Batrider as well. They want to have an eye on Meepo. Yeah, nearby, Jerex is kind of watching over. They have the pings out now. And company is coming. S4 begins to head over in that direction. Between the two of them, they may be able to get something going here. Wii is just farming. It doesn't seem to be known this is happening. And they'll make their move. Already going for the flight. Jerex has a beautiful setup with the stomp. They flame break him back. One more right click could Whoa. do it. Can they get the finish? They can't do it. The living armor comes out, but they finally get it done. They have to really commit hard for it. Oh, nice little TP out, though. And OG might not have any casualties. Oh, S4, though, eats some shots with this tower. Oh, he's trying to make it away. No, he ends up going down that tower. Seeks revenge and will get it. No tell as he steps in. We'll welcome a crush and then be able to back away. The takedown of Meepo though, certainly worth it though for OG at the end of the day. Yeah, when you kill a Meepo, it, uh, it's not like you killed just another mid hero because he benefits so much, farms like twice as fast as any other hero, so. Meepo right back on the move though, gets to his mid lane. And Jerix who has been Serious problem for Thunderbirds in this game, whether it be playing down these deep wards or finding those kind of setups here. Nearby, Batrider, lasso pullback onto Soxa. And as he begins to fly through and from above, Jerex will help out by sending in the Spirit and they will be able to get the clinch. Soxa goes down and OG begins to pull ahead. Now 4-2, to two, but T-Birds already on the prowl for their own setup. They hit a smoke and begin to head their way. Look at this S4. Heads right their direction, and the trap is sprung, but S4 doubles back and is able to avoid the crush. Ooh, oh. quick, nice, knee-jerk reaction there. I mean, if he was not watching his hero at that moment, that would have just been a quick... Yeah, if he, yeah, if he was picking his nose or something. Yeah, picking You're his nose. You're playing a major, you. man. Yeah, don't pick your nose. This is major time. And S4 says, don't worry, I'm not. Avoids trouble, but Misery is still watching over S4 a little bit, but that kill opportunity is now gone. And, uh, you know, you see Moon kind of head back into the lane and continue his quest for that Blink Dagger, which feels oh so far away. Yeah, first the Dragon Lance completed on Vipo. Gonna get Blink Dagger after that. It's gonna come really fast if he doesn't die. Uh, Slardar uh, 
Why Slaughter uh, fell off? It's because they nerfed Sprint. I mean, he's not uh, Usain Bolt anymore. Uh, it only lasts 12 seconds, cooldown 17. So you can't be all over the place. Even there, he didn't have it up and ready to be able to sprint in and go for a setup. And uh, once they tried to make their move, a TP was forced and they had to change their mind. Nearby, look at this, S4. Kind of being a bit of a nuisance here. Spots out Wii and uh, heads out the other direction. And towards mid lane right now, Ping and Wii. He has a lasso good to go, but the only one nearby is going to be Fly. Fly, though, level 7 on his Lina. He has Laguna ready to go. One lasso onto one Meepo, and that could be a quick and easy pick. Yeah, Lina was farming mid for the past, like, what, four or five minutes, got his uh, mana boots up, uh, and uh, Alka, meanwhile, in the forest, got enough gold to buy Sacred Relic. Uh, let's talk about wards. Uh, look at those deep wards from Jerex. I mean, Jerex was all over the place. He was in all four kills. Uh, he placed those two deep wards on the high ground and even blocked uh, those two camps in the forest, but uh, now they divorced it, so Meepo couldn't get uh, that much farm. Yeah, very annoying for sure. Uh, it's just the Jarek's way. And uh, we works with all the other camps in the meantime until those are dewarded. Still patience here from No-Tail in the top lane. Look at his pickup here. Timbersaw with a medallion. I don't think I've personally seen that very often. Uh, No-Tail is that kind of a player that uh, sometimes it works magic, sometimes it's so stupid th this game is going to be really good because of the Nike's bomb and all that minus armor. I mean, he dies usually dies in few hits if once like you go in with the Slardar sprint. So, I mean, Slardar, Blink Dagger, Nike's bomb uh, with uh, Slardar ult. This way he can't really die because he has this, Ooh, that extra rush. 7 armor. A rush for S4. He flame breaks Moon back and will avoid the crush altogether. Nice quick reaction once again from him. Rotation comes out from No Tail and they're looking to go for a possible counterplay here. They've spotted Soxa. Resolution runs back, but he's eating the bulk of the damage here from No Tail. And it looks like they're not going to go any further here. Meanwhile, mid lane, possible jump on the fly, but Fly is able to kind of avoid that one too. Man, you can feel the thirst coming out from Thunderbirds now. You know, Moon would be able, would love to be able to get these kind of ganks and and push the pacing on being able to pick up that blink dagger faster, but they're not getting those opportunities. OG is not making it easy. Meanwhile, though, as I say that, No Tail could be in a bit of trouble in the bottom lane as he gets hit with the amp damage. He now is in a world of hurt. One more crush should help him get the finish, and there it is, stepping in his S4, but it comes a bit too late, and I have jinxed him. Yeah, you see how much he can tank with uh, that extra medallion. Uh, meanwhile, Radiance is finished on Alchemist, 12 minute Radiance, so uh, plus Armlet, he's just gonna keep farming. Back to the grind of the Alchemist game. It's more space created, if you will, that he didn't have to get involved with. It. But yeah, as mentioned, the golden sword that we all know and love is now in the hands of the guy we all know and love too. And, uh, We'll see uh, how much they're going to be able to get from it or space they can create around it right now. Moon has returned now up towards the top lane, hand in hand with Misery. Jerex is there. Jerex is amped up, and uh, they'll just dish out the root. But that is where they will spot out on a nearby. We tries to make an assault move, but OG unleashes the counterplay now and looks to make chase. It's going to be No-Tail looking to move in for We. But on the other side, S4, as you can see, gets the lasso pullback, looking to go for the finish, and a prized one at that is Resolution going down on his life stealer, and they're going to want more. Popping out the dust. The chase is on for Soxa here. They bump him back, and slowly but surely, they'll finish him off. OG take another winning fight. Wow, the, the, they decided to go for Alk. They thought they have enough damage, but to good uh, flame break from Batrider just uh, spread them all over the place. Slardar needs his blink dagger. Some yeah, hundred it's gold away. Tough. For it's tough. Okay. Hi, how you farming over there? Fly just insta deletes Moon, and he makes it away. Wow. Uh, so wow. I heard you're going for a blink dagger. Yeah, after first net he can't stun him anymore. I mean, stop the TP. That was crazy. No respect coming out and, uh, well, 
I don't think OG. I don't know. I guess OG kind of revealing a bit of their deep vision. Whatever the case may be, uh, fly at the right place at the right time. And that will stunt the growth even further here of the Thunderbirds. While still allowing both No Tail and On on the other side to continue to their path of glory. Oh, gem picked up by tree and protector. It's the yeah, just same as the last game. Uh, they they want to get rid of the vision. Yeah, that it is getting it is feeling a bit out of control here for OG as they have just kind of determined every pick and fight, even here and now. Soxa barely holding on does manage to get some help from the living armor and pops his own wand to get him back up to half of his health. Back to the tower grind they go. OG. A little weak in the tower takedown department until this guy shows up, the big one. Ana stepping in now to kind of assist there, but now a fight kind of breaking out here. Sox in nearby, spotted once again. OG consider going for him, but they've also spotted Misery, and they'll blast him down. The gem, the precious gem is there still, and no one's going to get it. Okay, well, oh, gem back there. The chase is on still. Prize picks are certainly more worth it. As uh, they are going to get connection with the stomp, Soxa, double LSA connection. Moon also goes down. It's a killing spree for Fly. OG really playing well this time. Good, uh, good rune really by S4. That was in his rune. He just uh, had the vision on them. Who picked up the gem? I didn't see. Uh, they got it back. The courier managed to fly in there and pick it oh, up. Nice. It's Roche time. Can they do it? Yes, they can. It's going to go down really fast. Thunderbirds is, uh, could try to head that direction the second they're privy to what's going on with the back of the smoke, but uh, it is already going to be done for. Moon is going to be spotted as he TP'd in probably through the shrine. Now going to be forced to head all the way back into the high ground, but he goes down. We steps in, tries to get off some poof damage here, and it does some work onto Ana, but they just begin to blast it home with the power of No Tail stepping in. It does a wealth of damage. And it is we are going to get obliterated. Now Socks to the high ground. He's like, I'll just freaking drop a ward, I guess. It's all I got left. It will be my tombstone, though. Again, gem is dropped, down. and the career is going to pick it up for the second Aha. time. At least we have that. They lack damage. I mean, they can't really fight into that uh, small small space against Elder Titan. He didn't even use ulti there. I think he was out of mana, maybe. Didn't see. Or was it cooldown? Okay, Batrider has his Blink Dagger now, so it's going to be a lot easier to initiate Slardar. On the other hand, uh, still lacks uh, 600 gold. Oh yeah, it was worth mentioning that Soxa was uh, taken out by the Neutral Creep. Uh, keep, uh, oh my god. Neutral Creep in that recent trade. It ended up going down. So At least they got one little thing to take away for themselves, but it is without question, as you can see on the net worth graph here, a OG kind of a game. 10k net worth about to be taken by them. Resolution crosses paths with Ana here as we begins to think about stepping in with the Earthbind. Thunderbirds quickly step off just as OG show up to play. They are quick to coordinate and go for any sort of counter engagement to Thunderbirds. Yeah, they're just leaving the tier 1 tower top and probably gonna go further for the top Tier 2 tower because Slardar just deep it bottom. They know he, he wants to farm that blink dagger so he, they can just continue on top. Takes them a while to get these towers though. It's the power of the tree and the fact that they don't have the best building hitters. So they're just going to have to slowly but surely be able to bring it down while Resolution just splits everything he can out elsewhere. But you know, you're looking at a game where this Alchemist is really in a league of his own and I'm curious to see if in future matchups when you're going against OG, if people are really going to just fall to banning Naga and Alchemist instead of the Terror Blade. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Like, uh, usually they are like saving that Alc for the second pick phase, but now they see they can pick it in the first phase and just win. Yeah, I think their ideas on trying to put heavy favor into stuff like that Magnus and Monkey King that we saw at DAC, they don't. You know, maybe the code has been cracked based on the win rate we're seeing on Monkey King. It seems to be that way. So when they don't have to worry about stuff like that, they just you know, put more favor possibly into getting these these heroes that they know work with their players and with their team synergy. And that happens to be a lot of these, you know, 
Illusion Radiance Heroes. So, AKA, we could be seeing a lot more of this. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Triant Protector, I mean, the hero is either banned or picked, but uh, he still has below 50% win ratio th this tournament. I mean, right now, what, what, what's Trian doing? Like, if, if he's just scouting, and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, healing towers, providing yeah. vision. I mean, it's good for a team fight, uh, for saving people, but uh, I'm not sure it's a first pick material. Yeah, right now, it is definitely the hot pickup, uh, the recent addition to Captain's Mode, and what comes along with that. You know, it's part of the thing where a lot of teams don't have a lot of experience going against Trion Protector. A lot of teams don't have experience even playing it, but that could be played against you. Or it can work in your favor here. Almost get an approach onto Fly, but uh, they will decide to pull away because once again, any chance that Thunderbirds have tried to make a gank happen or go for a pick, OG are just so fast to respond. They know they can win any fight that's in front of them. The problem is, is getting hold of the fight. Thunderbirds are quick to make it out. Now, oh, Vipo, he's building uh, Aghanim Scepter. We didn't see Aghanim Scepter for a really, really long time on yeah. Vipo. Yeah, because what, what do we normally see? We see normally a lot of build-ups into uh, Dragon Lances, and then yeah. maybe an Ags later on, maybe an E-Blade or something. Yeah, it's usually one Dragon Lance into Blink, or just uh, two Dragon Lances into Blink, into Hex, E-Blades after for stats. Well, he uh, might be able to get a finish here, but possibly not before they lose all of their outer towers. Another one goes down here as OG will claim an extra bit of gold in their purse and uh, step off from there. Steady as she goes here. We already know the game plan really that OG are going to be going for. I mean, it's their game to kind of dictate. More traditional items need to come online for them. It's like your four staff here for your S4's Batrider. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it looks like it's going to be Jarek's also going to be going for a four staff. Yeah, it's you know. double four staff against Slaughter and Nikes uh, yeah. and All those melee yeah. heroes going to be kited. Yeah, plus uh, they, they don't need to worry about Aghanim Scepter upgrades, which are pretty normal for Timbersaw and for, for others not so much. But uh, once they get those up, if the game prolongs, uh, it's going to be really easy to fight with for OG. Oh, oh. Anna. On one side, they make a good pop onto S4 and quickly take him out. On the other side, they've spotted out Anna, and they're going to be able to trap him down. Hit him with the earth bite, hit him with the poofs, and they're going to get him. Okay, Thunderbirds now suddenly just spike on up and get some new life going as they get a huge pick. That Alchemist will hand over a good chunk of change. 2,200 gold going to be going the way of the Thunderbirds on that one. Who got the last hit on him, too? It was Weeha, of all people. One of the best things you could ask for here. Yeah, this this were crucial two pickoffs for Thunderbirds. Good timing and good reading because they don't have a vision on that side of the map. They got a ward over here down now. Show me where. where Wait, where are you you're talking about Thunderbirds? Yes. This ward? Oh, that ward. All right. That's just okay. on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, is they it? have one near the shrine. I'm blind. Just a tiny little guy. It's not a lot, though, just to kind of see where their mid lane is going to be rotating through, which it is probably providing a fair amount of info right now. OG just kind of huddling up together while they wait for their Alchemist to make their return. Thunderbirds can kind of take this opportunity to expand their wings a bit and uh, farm up elsewhere here, allowing Soxa to get to his level 2 on Nether Swap would be a nice little treat for them. And uh, Resolution has a AC now slated up. Far, far away from it, but yeah. uh, you need to stay positive, like queue up one more, one more item, like Basher. Or Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, journey ahead of him here, but for now, him and Weeha are kind of making it work. Weeha to go for a sheep stick next, putting more favor into possibly hiding or locking down and uh, taking the alchemist out of the equation. 
I already mentioned that it's not gonna be like a, a lot of kills in the game because it's the third game of the series. It's pretty much always like that. People don't like to risk anything, so they're just taking it slow. Both teams uh, expect they can take it to a late game, so uh, the next fight's gonna probably come at Roche, which is pretty soon. A few minutes, two minutes. Yeah, we will uh, get it in actually just about 30 seconds time or so, so not too bad of a timer here. Uh, OG though is just kind of hanging all the way towards the bottom, probably scouting out to see if Thunderbirds are waiting in the wings nearby. They don't have any vision in the Thunderbirds jungle, so maybe we're hoping for a possible opportunity to beta on a first, but once they see nothing's going on there, attention is starting to be put towards that Roche pit you mentioned before. And it looks like we already have the Thunderbirds in a pretty decent position over by their shrine. But, uh, of course, as you can see, OG have the benefit of the Elder Titan with that spirit to scout things out. Yeah, Solar Crest is finished on No Tail. He's going for the ultra defensive build. Uh, good against the Nikes. Some extra armor evasion against Meepos and uh, Nikes, of course. So. All right, a bit of a change up here. OG pop a smoke, head one direction, then change their mind to go another right on through this mid lane if they do continue to head up they could end up possibly crossing paths here Ooh, they get a ward down but looks like we has already stepped away up a bit further though is misery og get two deep wards down doesn't look like they're going to scout anyone, but look at this. S4 nice heads indoors to go for Socks of Moon. Makes chase, hits off his own crush, and suddenly No Tail is entrapped inside. Socks is going to be able to pull him in. No Tail goes down, hands over a three kill streak, and suddenly just abort, abort here for OG. I, I, I don't know if it was a swap or something, but No Tail was suddenly just yeah, way is, deep in inside. What the is base. that guy doing in enemy base? I mean, there was I, no swap. Swap is not on cooldown. He just lost some charges, and that's it. Maybe he missed Timber Chain, or Timber Chain to the high ground and was in there. I actually didn't see the beginning oh, of that, yeah. but whatever the case may be, just a little too far. I'm looking at uh, Elder Titan's uh, talent tree. I mean, this is one of the shittiest talent trees that I've seen. Like, what is this? It makes no sense how Hero is played. Let me see here. The old Elder, Elder Titan. Yeah, respawn time early. Strength. Health and Echo Stomp, Attack Speed, Magic Resist, and, uh, and it doesn't yeah, nothing, synergize. Nothing to get super excited about. Yes, but uh, you know we'll see. Maybe in the future the Frog will give him a little bit of love in here. Thunderbirds though, Roche of the utmost importance here. OG make their move. Swap. Jump in. They get the lasso pullback. It's going to be on the resolution. Can they burst him down with the Laguna power? They can. He's done for. Nice jump and crush from Moon, but it comes too late to save their fallen. Resolution Core. They are also going to be taking a Soxa support with it. And now that is going to allow OG to get an easy clean finish onto this Roche. There was not enough range for Venge to swap it. It could have been a different fight. At least it would last longer. But uh, another good smoke from uh, OG. Now they're going to give Aegis to probably uh, an Alchemist so they can siege the base because they don't have anything to hit towers with. I mean, look at their heroes. This is going to be a big problem in uh, the late game, especially against Treant. They can't really chop it uh, slowly. Lina doesn't do damage to tower, nor does Elder Titan, Timbersaw, Batrider. This, this is going to be a really huge problem for them. Well, they got to do what they can here. Moving on through this mid lane. Weeha doing his work through the bottom. Trying to split out the pressure. He will probably TP his way back. So OG can't cut him off. It looks like he'll head top. So we are just kind of taking that position for his team now. Splitting out the lanes and trying to stall things out for his team here a bit. Because as you mentioned, OG are going to have a hell of a time trying to close things out inside the base. It might have to come after some sort of misplay from Thunderbirds or a pickoff outside. Outside of that, it could be a little bit of a struggle. Sieging Alk with an Aegis is, is cool, but we'll have to see exactly how effective it's going to be. But in the meantime, it looks like a Tier 2 could be theirs and the final Outer Tower. Yeah, it seems like they want to try to trade the Tier 2 towers, but uh, OG is going to have enough time to defend or just try to go for Tier 3 instead. Alright, they get that in pretty good time. So they have and three, three, four staffs ready oh, yeah. on OG. 
it's gonna be really big and uh, easy to kite around with. It may get a bit loopy with all the jumping around here, but uh, we'll see if they're going to be able to utilize them to get a good save on Ana if necessary. He begins to go to work on a tier 3. So Resolution steps in and tries to slow him, but immediate pounce comes out from S4 going on the one target that he can go safely on, and that's going to be the Ventral Spirit. Now going to be taken out of the game for nearly 40 seconds. While that happens, up and above, Meepo moving in is going to be taken down as Fly finishes him off with the Laguna Blade. Yeah, he took almost took the tower down, 100 HP left, he's pinging it out. Well, still a decent trade. They, they're going to heal their tower, and he can continue doing that. Nice little casual push in, but when you compare the damage, it's looking a lot nicer here for Thunderbird. So, OG now have to begin to consider all their ducks in a row before they can kind of hit the high ground harder. Yeah, Still again. have that Aegis. No. 43 seconds. Meepo has buyback, so they want to at least force a buyback on the bottom. But uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. Tower is going to heal pretty soon. They need to be more care careful with that swap. Just need to stand a little bit farther further from uh, Batrider. Yeah, let's see if... Uh, look how far away Sox is trying to stay here. Ana could end up stunning himself. Nope, does manage to get it off onto Resolution and gets back to work onto this Tier 3. OG and company staying very far back. Let's they don't want this said. tower to fall. If, if it doesn't fall, this is going to yeah, be really this good this for is be Thunderbirds. This a huge hold up yeah. for OG if they can't get this finished. Moon steps in, goes for the crush. Resolution tries to chunk some damage onto Ana. He could need some help here. Tier 3 ends up dropping. Ana will end up stunning himself. Do OG continue this, or do they decide to pull off? Weeha makes his move. He gets an instant takedown onto Jerex. The Elder Titan's going to be gone. No Tail jumps on back and has to re-engage. His Ana is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Weeha, but will get bursted down. He's going to be forced to buy back at this point, but they've already hog tied up Resolution, and he is out of this one for a minute without a buyback. Buyback's going to be forced out between both Wee and Soxa here. Weeha waiting up and above to hopefully get a big, big strike, but... Ana begins his work onto the res onto the racks. Now we jump from behind. Almost able to get the burst onto S4, but no! That's a dieback! losing his own life. It's a dieback here. And that's going to be game. It's over just like that. OG have done it. Started this series off down 0-1. And they pull it back in games 2 and 3. The game 2 comeback was an impressive comeback in itself. But now they take the whole series 